On this episode of NSFW Show, we are joined by Ayaz Akhtar of Tech News Today. We break down all the breaking news in a way that it has never been broken before. Also, ruin them spreads across the internet. We introduce the tantalizing possibility of Diamond Con and so much more. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW Show. <laughs> Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 181, recorded on June 4th, 2013. No hobo. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 1 million high-quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code NSFW6. And ProXPN! ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. And Tonks Coffee. Tonks offers a bi-weekly subscription. Tonks sources their beans directly from the growers. They are roasted and shipped within 24 hours, giving you the freshest coffee beans in the world. For a free sample, visit tonks.org slash NSFW. That's T-O-N-X dot O-R-G slash NSFW. We'll kick things off with a 90-year-old doing a double backflip. Have you seen this, Justin? No. It's amazing. Okay, go. All right. I got to get closer. Are you The show that is nominally safe for work. Hello, beautiful party people. My name is Brian Brushwood. Join us always in live studio in Petaluma, California. One Justin Robert Young. What is going on, Professor JRY? Holy crap, Brian. Uh, we have a hell of a show here for you today. Uh, I'm joining you from the TNT set, farting in the same seat that once used to house uh, Tom Merritt. Uh, and and I'm. Does. Once a month. I'm giving that to The legend is, if you wish extra hard and close your eyes and then peek open, you just might see Tom Merritt in that seat. Actually, Brian, and this is actually a fact. I heard it from a girl in eighth grade that if you go to a mirror, a bathroom mirror, and turn off the lights and yeah. say Samsung earnings eight times in a row... <laughs> Tom Merritt will appear to you and let you know uh, what you can find out next See, in the analysis this, segment after the news views. That's not the way I heard it was that you got to get a friend to lay down. You wait until after they fall asleep. You put their hand in warm water and then all of you put two fingers underneath the person and you lift up saying Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo. When it comes down, <laughs> it's Marissa Mayer ready to give an interview to Tom Merritt. I'll tell you what, whatever you believe, you will know that to my right is the co-host of Tech News Today. He's also the host of Know How, ladies and gentlemen, Ayaz Akhtar. Well, hello. Good to see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this That's, is I love I love the way in the pre-show like uh, like Ayaz is all fired up and then the moment it's go time he's like hello gentlemen. Well, you guys in the pre-show told me to shut up because you guys were having a nice racist discussion and I was not to be a part of that as you two are. Well, that are, would make you awkward. You're melanin challenged. It's not my fault. You're challenged. Okay. And but no, so one, I'm no all one knows what now. race I am. I'm, I'm the nice Gonzo now. of the internet. Oh, really? Just, You're blue. We should yeah. go 
ahead and clarify. By yes. racist discussion, he means that what we were talking about was perceived as too white for Ayaz, which, by the way, is going to be my new hit. That's impossible. Coming out next week. Too, too, too white, white for Ayaz is the name of our new comedy album. Okay, now. The, the now, sequel now, to Enjoy the Garden. What is the equivalent, equivalent of an egg? Okay, like white on the outside, yellow on the inside. Like I am brown on the outside wow. and white on the inside. <laughs> What's the equivalent? Is that like a poorly cooked potato? Am I just a potato? Uh, actually, Was a, that Irish? I'm, uh, a, a mound? A mound. I, You're right. I'm hey, full of white hey. inside. I believe it's a cholesterol-friendly egg substitute. <laughs> you are right. I am definitely either Probably a mound or... Right. Nothing but egg whites on the inside. I'll tell you what I, I think I as. Mm -hmm. You're an almond joy to me. You know, sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you sometimes don't. Sometimes you're on SOW. <laughs> uh, hey man, I can't. Well, that got uncomfortably racist before. early. Oh, settle down, everybody. I know you guys are awesome. Oh, dude, and you guys are fantastic. Not, not uh, racist enough. I only uh, kid <laughs> because I love. Brian, go ahead. Professional, Justin. Where where are we gonna take things to get things out of the gate? Uh, here's the deal. I ask. Yes, listen, sir. Listen, I'm I'm a daily listener to Tech News shopping. today. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, and I think you're doing a great job. Thanks. Just want to let you know. Uh huh. Don't be nervous about this. I should be. You shouldn't. I won't be then. You're shouldn't. doing a very good job. Thank you. Very good job. All right. Very, very good job. How many R's in that very? Uh, more E's than R's. Take oh, that for ease. what you will. Ooh, that's trouble. Here's yeah. the deal. We want to make sure that you stay at the top of your game, which is why we're going to throw you through uh, another one of these breaking news spin cycles that we've right, done. Hold on. Well, yeah, would... Justin, Justin, you're, you're, you're selling it all wrong. I can speak to Ayaz's race, no matter which one it is, and I don't know which Go one Go ahead. Go why for don't it. you speak in the language for which the race of Ayaz responds to the most? The race of Ayaz. Yes. I like this. Ayaz, did yes. you ever see a little movie called Rocky Three? Yes, I did. With, yeah, with Mr. T. Rocky Three. Uh, Mr. T wants to bang white women. No, it's 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 to kill Apollo. That's the no. lesson of Rocky Three, right? No, that's 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 Rocky Four. Rocky Four, Drago takes. But it's uh, oh no, you're Rocky right. Four was about hubris, but Rocky Three was about complacency. Guess okay. who's getting fat and sassy and old? Me. And needs to get trained by his former enemy, Apollo uh, Creed. Is that his name? Yeah, as Apollo and Creed. Then, uh, uh, and then so and wait. Then win. Which you one of you, tiger, my friend? Which one of you is going to wear the red, white, and blue? Trunks, because jury's wearing a dress right now. Brian, are you wearing the red, white, and blue trunks? <laughs> you have no idea. I got this close. The camera cut back too fast before I had another I'm shirt glad. on. So you just you count yourself lucky right now. Here's the thing. We got to make sure that you're that you're tight and ready to rock. We got some news stories that we're gonna rock. Okay. So, so first, here, of all, let's go back. let's take a moment. Yeah. Go back. We're gonna we're gonna interrupt Twit's programming for an important news bulletin. Justin and I are gonna give you just the facts. It's gonna be up to you. To explain to us the situation, give a little insight, maybe postulate, uh, theorize about what's where things are going to go from here. Make sense? So, so, yeah, just be ready. When we throw to you, mm. be ready. Okay. I swear to God, if you stumble, I'm going to throw this beer on you. Uh, All right. Okay. Sounds like a deal. Right. Don't waste the beer. You know what? You. Slam. Which, by the way, listen, I know how Merritt used to run things yeah, huh? when he was here. That was, he would just only throw red wine, okay? <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning, recordings of TNT. Red wine only. Whipping you with uh, wire coat hangers. That dude, and he, he thunderbolt. He's like, here's the thunder. And it was really <laughs> annoying, I got to say. All right. So here's the deal. Me and Brian are going to discuss breaking news, and we're going to throw to you, All right. and then we're going to judge your reaction. Judge All right, me. back to Twit's regularly scheduled programming. At the show. <laughs> uh, oh! oh, my God, we have an important news story. Out of nowhere, the tech world is all aflame and asunder because tech company... Yahoo, Brian. Yahoo has acquired FaceFart. Uh, FaceFart, of course, being... The app that was previously rejected in iOS but has found a happy home at... Uh, well, Yahoo, Brian, a uh, uh, face fart, of course, standing for face facial artistic recognition technologies. Uh, make sure that your face is recognized by your phone, specifically when somebody farts on it. Uh, ju just when, okay, so specifically, face fart is short for face face. Facial artistic recognition technology. Brian, you know, sometimes people try to work in the acronym no matter what. All right? I'm not saying it's artistic. They're the company. We're the news outlet covering them.
I'll tell you what, for better insight than you and I are able to give, because we're, this is important, we're going to preempt NSFW, we're going to go live to TNT's Ayaz Akhtar. Ayaz, what can you tell us about the situation? Well, you, I got to say the first thing the Yahoo, I've, I've actually talked to Minister Meyer, and she wants to get rid of the vowels similar to Flickr. She's dropping the A from face fart to FCE, actually FC, so it's I can't say it on the air, actually. FC. <laughs> There's a you real problem. You should try, though. I don't think I'm going to. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my position as an anchor over at Tech News today. Uh, the, the lack of vowels, apparently Wall Street is freaking out because they are also realizing that without the vowels, face fart is a swear word, sort of, and it's causing <laughs> a ton of problems. But that's what's going on with Yahoo. And what's going to happen with Yahoo, by the way, is that with face fart technology, when you look at your Flickr photo, it's going to know that you enjoy sunsets or that you enjoy horrible pictures of horrible things. Justin Robert Young, I'm looking at you because I know what you look at at Flickr, and it's going to be customized for you. Oh, dude, Back just to you guys. I'll tell you what, Brian, that's but breaking news and breaking wind. <laughs> That's okay. Not only was he able to immediately scoop up what he dished him, he gave us extra insight and tossed it to you at the end. I think it's time to take it to the next level. I'll tell you what, uh, Brian, good, but I'm still going to give that one. But that's just that's di digital laughter. That's not. That's a dog laughing at him when he misses oh, the shot. That's great, Duck actually. You know what? You're I saying, like you're saying. He, you're saying he's got more in him than than he's given us. You know what? I as a, uh, listen. Yes. Uh, Give me a pep talk. There. I don't want to on, say. Make... I don't want to get too negative here. Okay. But that was worse than the Armenian Holocaust. I think you might be uh, correct. Absolutely. I think I could do a better job. I think we should try it again. All right. Looks rolling with it. This is this is a pro. All right, look, we'll take it to the next level. Let's go back to Twit's regularly scheduled program. Here we go. Hey, Adela, what's happening in October? A baby's coming out from me vagina. Oh my God, breaking news happening right now. I can't believe it. From the least thought of corner of technology, uh, there's an acquisition of who? A crying baby, Brian. Facebook has adopted a crying baby that was lying on the street in San Francisco. Uh, now, of course, Facebook uh, doing this after their recent kerfluffle, after doing, what was it again? Uh, they acquired a crying goat, uh, <laughs> which they thought was a baby. A big, listen, the shareholders were not happy when they found out that it was indeed a hooven animal. Yes, okay, but now granted, the goats in the past, babies are the future, or at least that's what Mark Zuckerberg said in important- Huge in China. <laughs> yes, and most importantly, he announced that they would be deciding the baby's name- uh, Is going to be Quartzel. Quartzel. Yeah. Spelled, of course, Q-W-R-T- At sign, uh, emoji, thumbs Seven. up. Uh, and then the uh, the uh, the the emergency emoji, and the then, emergency uh, light emoji and emoji. Then also, and then that that picture of like in symbols of the guy flipping over the table in rage, like that's the end of it. Exactly. And, and her name. And that, and for the, the record, was its birth name according to the certificate tucked in its front pocket, which was a pinstripe suit tailored specifically for a newborn. Uh, well, for further insight, we go to uh, Tech News Today's resident uh, pundit-in-chief, uh, one Ayaz Akhtar. Ayaz, uh, what can you tell us about this situation? Well, thanks, Brian and Justin. What I'm finding out about Quartzel Emergency Emoji Race Table is the fact is stockholders <laughs> are super excited about the fact that Facebook has figured out a way to get the right mammal. The thing is, before the goat, there was all kinds of other things, rabbits. Uh, there was also the dolphin, which, which is a whole other issue. Uh, Less said about that, the better. Absolutely, because of all kinds of behavior that caused issues, because Facebook's all about social, and dolphins, not necess necessarily social. Goats, not exactly the same thing, but Quartzel Emergency Emoji Rage Table is a big find. This is like NBA draft style, number one pick. This is the baby they should have adopted, and Wall Street is loving this. The fact is, Facebook is now the next Facebook by picking up Emoji Rage, tab rage Table. Back wow. to you in the studio. That was smooth. Justin, I, I don't even have a comment on that. You I'm, want to know what? I'm going to give it a... Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that's, that's, that's just the opening bars of a...
Why are you like specifically choosing neutral sound bites that don't necessarily mean one way or the other? Uh, no, Brian. Why would you think that? That was out of that was out of jury's mouth. That was it sounds like you're just sort of throwing out nothing. Like inserting a coin right now, I gotta say. It, it sounds to me like what you're saying is that this could be a new beginning for like a fresh start for IS. <laughs> okay. uh, I'll tell you what, great job, IS. Hopefully, there'll be no other news that disrupts our day until then. Ooh, we're gonna like, that's to good because I'm tired. Quits regular programming. Hey, I used to ride skateboard. <laughs> My dad has said, What? believe it someone has just been shot someone has been shot in the tech world and i can't believe it's o malik by his rival android o malik as you know there has for years been a rival we ri rival we and that's their word because it started over a match of we bowling that's right android ohm and actual ohm were playing we bowling they tied they decided to end it with fisticuffsmanship eventually it became a rap battle and as we all know it has now escalated to an actual shooting going for details live on the scene we cut over to ayaz Akhtar. Well, you know, the thing is, this, this, these reports of a murder are actually incorrect. It turns out that the rival of Ohm was the Android rival, was trying to attack him in the game. The problem is, what I found out as I did my investigative reporting is that that Wii controller lost its little wrist strap and knocked Ohm in the head, sending him to the hospital, making everyone think he was dead. But the thing was, he wasn't dead. Ohm is resting comfortably at the hospital, but Android Ohm is in custody right now where he is playing bowling on the Wii with the police officers. Back to you, Justin. <laughs> uh well, I'll tell you, I'm getting uh, through my own sources that the mediator of the two sides is indeed iOS Ohm. iOS Ohm <laughs> instead of Android Ohm. Uh, now, this is all happening in physical space, right? Because I'm having a hard time picturing what Android Ohm and iOS Ohm would look like. I know well, what well, well, Android Ohm is, of course, a full Android version of Ohm Malik, much Please like interrupt. data from the next generation. It turns out that Android Ohm is actually made out of guacamole, hence the green structure of the Android Ohm. He's not actually a dessert, even though androids are usually based on desserts. He is a guacamole-based killer, but not yes, a killer, alleged killer excuse me of course ios ohm is prettier than both and yet surprisingly less functional also doesn't make itself available also you pay to play with ios ohm i know freebies all right <laughs> no. uh, -uh. Uh, uh hey you think you're gonna get one over free on ios ohm Got another uh, news story for you, Chico. Uh -uh. Actually, the, the worst part about iOS Home is when you casually, you're like at a party and you're like, you know, I'm wondering about that Google Glass. Have you tried that? He's like, well, actually, I've used uh, Google Glass and it's great. And you can find out all about it if you just buy some Ohm coins right now. Right? Just hand uh, some money. Actually, Brian, that's incorrect. You are thinking of Xbox Ohm, which demands that you buy Ohm points if you want to talk to them. Well, and what's weird is he's cagey about like, well, how much are own points? They were like, ah, you know, it's uh, their own points. Just go get some own points, and then and then and then we can play together, the two of us. Uh, of course, the loneliest of all the ohms is Windows Ohm, who nobody really cares about. Yeah, poor ohm. Poor Wait, ohm. Was this supposed to be about I? <laughs> <laughs> it just kept going. I was I totally cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all right. So, uh, <laughs> which, by uh, yeah, the way, yeah. listen, I want to point out to you because you can't see this, Brian, but we're doing this bit, and Ayaz is laughing hysterically and moving his mouth away from the mic, lest everybody else know that this is a funny bit to people that are here. <laughs> that's <laughs> he right. He certainly is positioned. He's just like, no, I'm serious. See, that's what a pro I am. It is. Well, yeah. Oh man, and I love these microphones Stay because on top of your game, Bri uh, Brian. You want to know what? I'm going to give our final grade to Ayaz. <laughs> Now, look, we discussed this. It was supposed to be a fart sound. Fart sound. That is not that's, a fart sound. That's what I fart. Here, yeah. hold on. Let me just oh, let that's you know. Sure. Hold on, you know oh. yeah, Brian, Brian's going to fart. He's a magician, after all. Now, I sit corrected, and I apologize to everyone here at NSFW and NSFW Show, the Diamond Club, and everybody for being incorrect as to what a fart sound is 
thankfully, Brian Brushwood has corrected me, and I am apologetic and uh, hope to win your uh, support again. It's too good. It's too good. He must be destroyed. <laughs> we, we must stop him before he takes all of our jobs. Uh, Don't ask him to do comedy next, Justin. Move on to the sponsors. Absolutely, Brian. Uh, you want to know uh, who is bringing uh, NSFW to us today? I do. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Brian. You take a picture, it'll last longer, thanks to Shutterstock.com. Oh, my God. Shutterstock, if I'm not mistaken, our, our, Shutterstock is the home of over 900,000 images that you can use for any of your professional endeavors? Uh, absolutely, Brian. Uh, you are absolutely correct. In fact, I think you should talk about it more. Okay, well, if I'm not mistaken, from what little experience I have with Shutterstock, Shutterstock is the home of high-quality videos and photographs. Now, I don't know exactly which one we're supposed to focus Here's on. Here's the deal. Uh, Brian, at Shutterstock.com, you'll find the perfect image or video for, you, for your next creative project, whether it's for your website, a publication, an advertisement, a video, or any other type of project. You can choose from over 1 million high-quality stock video clips, That's 2D new. or 3D animation and motion graphics. That's new, Justin, because it was only 900,000 last time. That's why I said 900,000, but they've updated. From what I hear, it wasn't like 10,000 a week they're adding, something ridiculous. Uh, 10,000 video clips each week. So every time you visit, you'll find something new. Shutterstock gives you the video content you need to bring your creative projects to the next level. And they make it easy. Shutterstock has sophisticated search tools. You can search and drill down by category, resolution, contributor, and more. Shareables, clip boxes... Save a video, assets to a clip box, then access them anytime and share them with other team members. Uh, there ain't no team. It's just you and me versus the world. As soon as IAS turns around, we're going to shiv them in the back. I, I enjoy that. Shutterstock is a complete global offering. I bet they have actually... offices located in more than a dozen countries, including Germany, China, Italy, Brazil, Belgium, etc. Shutterstock is a true global marketplace for buyers and creative contributors. They have multilingual customer service with dedicated corporate reps and full-time customer support throughout the week. Right on, man. Dude, thank you. Thank you very much, Shutterstock. Well, here, like Brian, it gets even better. You can try Shutterstock today by signing up for a free account. No credit card needed. Just start an account. Begin using Shutterstock to help imagine what your next project could look like and save the video selections you find to your clip box. Once you nope. decide to purchase, use offer code NSFW6 on new accounts, and you'll receive 30% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com. For 30% off new accounts, use offer code NSFW6. Justin, I love you, man, but I don't feel like you're showing proper respect for the code. I feel like you're breaking the code. Uh, NSFW6, Brian. That's okay. No, but you got to say it with reverence. The code, like, a, like a, a password. It gets you in and it gets us paid. So it was like NSFW6. And then you go, Asota Balocha, Sambi Jole. We thank Shatterstock for their support of NSFW. Tewana Wanga. Hey, man. Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, hey, so, and actually, we should talk, uh, I asked, is it true that you're like a real-life bona fide lawyer, like past the bar and everything? I was. I'm a retired lawyer at this point. Uh, I, I filed a piece of paper, and I don't have to pay my dues anymore. So I was, but now I'm a retired attorney, and that piece of blue paper sits in my office at home. Do, okay, now, hold on. So, so. Okay, can you speak freely about the lawyers or like, will they come for you in the night? Like, can you talk about like, lawyering's just a big old racket that they they make you pay money to be a lawyer and then they want you to sue a bunch of people because that's what lawyers do. Well, let's find out right now. How about that? Because, you know, I got nothing to do. And tonight, if lawyers want to come to my house, I'm up for it. I would like love to have a party. <laughs> Is this? See, Wait, I, you want to have a lawyer party? Oh, yeah, they're fun. Ain't no but lawyer party. Hey, hey, mm. you, you guys think mm. you guys can drink. Mm. Mm. Lawyers, feel, feel like, no, they can drink. Like yeah, break out the tort reform and the mother effing billable hours. Nah, usually it's more like bring out the vodka and bring out a ton, like that keg of beer. That's what lawyers do. They they drink vodka beer. and beer only. Well, if you set it up right with the, the uh, Country Time Lemonade, you got a great combination there, Jury. Country Time Lemonade? Have you tried this yet? And vodka? And beer, yes. What am I, a Girl Scout? Were you ever a college student? 
Veer eight, as we called it, as when I was Veer eight. Veer eight, yes. V oh, Veer. I thought it was Veer eight. It sounded like a sponsor. No, on there show. was there was no tomato juice in this. No, <laughs> V eight. How silly. Uh, let me ask you this, uh, lawyer style. How yeah. illegal is it if we directed all of our fans and Diamond Club right now to go spread a big fat rumor on the internet? Yeah. Like uh, let's say a marketing message, a little a little huzzah, like like a little pizzazz. It we all just sprinkled pizzazz on the internet that well, maybe benefited a, a, a fake idea. Well, that hang on, sometimes right. we pizzazz our pants, now, this, and it's very awkward when you're walking around church. The Second Circuit doesn't really care for huzzah, but pizzazz I hear is really good in the Ninth Circuit. So what, <laughs> what, I know, huzzah. what I need to know is where are you going to plan to do this, and then what is the actual message because that actually makes a difference. Uh, I just okay. want to let everybody use offer code VR8 at checkout, and you get thirty percent off. Veer your... Aid. Let, let, let me let me just say this as as flatly as we can. <clears throat> sure. We don't encourage anyone to take any specific action, but for the next fifteen minutes, Justin and I are gonna just talk about things we wish were true, and if they were to become true, that would be awesome. Uh -huh. Is that? Is that this isn't gonna hold up in court, is it? I as I would. Uh, I don't think so because we haven't said anything yet. You're That's just good. You're just talking about like we said a thing about a thing. So far, pretty good. All right. So hypothetically, hypothetically, let me say. Uh, oh man, you know what? Forget all this. Let me talk about something totally separate. Have you guys heard about this? This this wine beverage ruin them. Uh, I have. Ruin them, Brian. Yeah. No. Tell ruin me more em. about it. Uh, dude, ruin them. It, it, it allegedly. Was drunk. Dude, we should do we should do like the old ads, like the old the ones that we did like the parody of on Game On. Like, yes. All right, so you you call me. All right, call me on the phone. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this this microphone. <laughs> Did you phone up an antenna? Hey hey Justin. Hi Brian. Hey buddy, have you heard about the new wine cocktail ruin them? Oh my God, I'm drinking it right now. <laughs> How about that? You know, I heard it was drunk in the Roman Empire shortly before the fall. I heard that it was so awesome that it made everybody go so crazy. They literally shut down the greatest empire the world had ever known. Dude, did you know that I heard that they drunk it right before Prohibition? They did. And prohibition stalled what would have been the inevitable decline of the American democracy. You know, I heard they're drinking it now. It's available in over 40 states nationwide. In fact, Brian, because we're drinking it, we are the cogs for which will bring down our own destruction, leaving us in a complete police state where we all scrounge for only the most meager scraps as the civilization around us crumbles. You know what else I heard? Is if you search ruin them, one of the top results is our show, NSFW, which, if you ask me, is a little too much heat from the man. Absolutely. Come and get me, pigs. You have nothing on me. All I do is have a belly full of ruin them and, no. and a pocket full of dreams. <laughs> wrong, wrong direction. What I'm saying is, is wouldn't it be great if, like, other more credible sites came up instead of NSFW show when people search ruin them? Things like Wikipedia? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean that sounds kind of like you're hinting that they should, you know, alter... Who should? The New World Order? <laughs> no, no. I mean, the, first of all, there is no new... The That's Bilderberg no Conference? Okay, I, when did I call Alex Jones? Who are you? What is Pierce! Going here? Pierce, I love ruining him! <laughs> Pierce, In I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Benjamin Franklin drank ruin him. And if Obama wants to get his hands on it, he'll pray for my cold dead hands. Ah! I like the fact that when you lean back in rage, that green light hit and you actually started to transmutate into the Hulk. Do that again. I'm a ruin him, Pierce. All right, so let me just say, if I was wishing for things, eh? if I was wishing for some stuff to happen, I would wish that NSFW wouldn't be the number one result on Ruin em, and maybe some articles lending some credibility to the backstory of Ruin em, question what, mark? What do you say, Brian, um, if people can throw down in the chat room the big fat Ruin em doc that was put together and has been added to over the past, I mean, really a couple months, right, since we came up with this idea? 
Yeah, by the way, Carl has a brilliant idea. He says at some point we should have an offer code to get the cost down to seventeen seventy six per bottle. Yeah, listen. Not at that point yet, but in the future, I'm down for that. I think maybe maybe the release uh, when we do it. And uh, let me also just, let, let's go out of our way right now to thank everybody who has pre-ordered already. Just insane numbers on the pre-order. Thank you guys. It is really awesome that we can put out something like this and have it be uh, received by everybody who is uh, here in, in the chat realm. But I'll tell you what, hopefully when everybody gets their hands on it, it is going to be the real deal Holyfield. All right, let, let me interrupt right now. So the thing is, you know, Halloween time, they tell you not to take, you know, uh, candy from strangers in, in real life. And now you idiots are yeah. selling alcohol to this audience and they're buying it and drinking it. Like, well, the not fact yet. That, they, they don't have it yet. But like, do you understand well, the fact that you're talking to people about difference. ingesting a beverage that could have anything in it? Okay. Now, I hear it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. No, no, no. Okay, here's the difference, Sias, is your metaphor is 100% correct, and you should be worried about it. If you ever catch me and Justin in a van handing out candy, then At yes. That was like, like last Thursday, care. wasn't it? But, okay. but yes. if you ever catch us in a van, and behind us oh. is Willy Wonka, and we say, Willy, I don't know, something awesome that tastes like the ruination of mankind. But and then he says... Come with me. Oh, that's totally fine. You guys are right. You'll be in a world you guys, of twenty percent you know alcohol by volume. You guys are absolutely right. I think that's the way to go. I think that's that. I, I've been seeing that empty bottle in my set for weeks, and I'm like, hey, when will I get a full I, bottle of this alcoholic beverage? And when is it I happening? I drop some science on your face. Is uh, on my uh, face. I, sure. We heard that it's it's twenty percent alcohol by volume, which means uh, it's forty proof. Just drink this bottle. Uh, as I was swishing in my mouth today, take a look at the back of Listerine. Listerine, 21% alcohol by volume. This stuff is as alcoholic as Listerine is. All right. Only probably won't make you blind. Yeah. Because, Brian, you were telling me this. Apparently, Listerine is like a witch's brew that will turn you blue. <laughs> Yes, it's a witch's blue. Uh, no, like, uh, okay, so like Listerine's mostly alcohol, right? And uh, and I'd be interested if I asked, know something about this uh, with all his experience in drinking with hobos. Uh, yes, I do. Like, a lot, because, lot, you know, I used to be, so you know what? No, wait, noted wait, hobo drinker. Before before we even get into this, my, my whole days of being, you know, riding on trains and being the model for Don Draper for Mad Men, sure. this idea of being a hobo, I've got to say, like, I'm surprised you guys even knew about this because my Wikipedia page doesn't exist right now he, because somebody deleted it because it wasn't good enough. Relevant? You, well, your, your Wikipedia thing deleted? It got deleted because... Because you're not relevant? I'm not relevant. You know why? I disagree. But my hobo I days, have a Wikipedia page. Not bragging. I'll tell you... Okay, This by guy the way. has a Wikipedia page <laughs> and this one doesn't. How quickly, how Anyhow. How did things turn from us going to IAS and saying, IAS, is it okay for us to, like, you know, drop hints about Wikipedia tampering? And IAS is like, I don't know. It's hard for me to tell without anyone currently tampering with my Wikipedia page. I didn't say tampering. I said no nothing of the sort. You know, the thing is, Brian, you're choosing language that I'm not picking, and you're putting words <laughs> in my mouth, and I'm not saying anything close to that. And the fact is, I haven't said anything close to what you're saying, and I'm just saying that people, audience, could maybe do something to provide right. more footing for my page. Hold go on. ahead. Uh, I'm going to go on a weird sojourn here and we're gonna, we're going to meet back at, we're going to meet back at the main is path. Is there a tent involved? But this is this is odd cuz a lot of people won't know this sports reference, but uh the center for the Indiana Pacers just got into a big kerfuffle because he said the term no homo. You ever heard this, Brian? Yeah, sure, sure. It's People when say you, it's when you it's when you kiss the dude's nipple and you sort of give a little extra tongue. You're like, no homo, bro. Yeah, and you're so, like, yeah. So totally people cool. say that it's like right. like, no. oh, I was right behind him. No homo, right? Right. And and that's uh, especially now in this post Jason Collins coming out NBA, not cool. Got fined seventy five thousand dollars, and I think rightly so. But I think we should debut our own. We should have no hobo. Um, uh, I see. I was thinking no homo. Uh, it could be no how mo, <laughs> no how mo, <laughs> no how mo. Yes, you know what? I can't wait to do this. Do this show. Listen, uh, we can have the whole thing. I'm just saying. Listen, I have a beard and I drink Listerine. No hobo. <laughs> Play yourself my fart sound. Play it for me. Play you. his fart sound. <laughs> Hold on, wait, Brian. Why don't you go ahead and, and squat out a fart sound? Squat out a fart, us. sir. All right.
right, fine. I'll fart too. <laughs> Man, I, I asked, I, why don't you go ahead and join us? <laughs> All right. I'm glad that we got to do that with my microphone. <laughs> we've, be- we've become everything we hate. Uh, okay. But- <laughs> the- but, uh, here, by the way, this is like the biggest, uh, like, idea or, or, or like a conceptual understanding of the soundboard came from Allie uh, Gertz last week on the show because she was like, yeah, like I was actually like kind of really into the fact that you had a soundboard. And I'm like, well, it's weird because like we did it for a while and then people were like, oh, a soundboard. And I got really weird about it and like I didn't want to do it anymore. And she's like, oh, no, yeah, but like I hate it when super corny shows have like a toilet flushing. But I like it when it's nerd references I know. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> Maybe that's why people like it. I wish my fart noses sounded like uh, John Luke Picard. Make it so. But right now, we can't make it happen. All right, how about you try it again? Okay, try to make it so? Yeah, All right, go ahead. Try it. All right. Hey, where are the white women at? <laughs> Dang, nabbit. Hey, listen. So close. It's your butt, dog. Your, I, I can't, know. I can't control it. Well, it's the your thing butt. Is, the thing is, I had Mexican, and I don't know why it's asking for that. <laughs> I'm confused. All right, can we can we take just <laughs> get I'm it sorry. together? What happened, guys? Get it together. It's your show. What happened? Did I, right. did I uh, mess uh, it up? First of all, uh, the plug. I got to get it out. Uh, ruinum.com. R-U-I-N-U-M.com. Uh, let me just say in the next uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, if anybody in the chat room has some links of interesting stuff, maybe a little Google flexibility Made in, maybe if somebody were to like, you know, have the word ruin them uh, in their blog and point it to like the Wikipedia article on the, and, and how about this? This way we don't have to alter any Wikipedia entries. What if we Google bomb the word ruin them always links to a Wikipedia article on the fall of the Roman Empire? So that, um, uh, or, or, uh, or prohibition or all these Wikipedias, like you guys have already made this giant list of things that happened because of ruin them or that ruin them was and, and, and also like like if if let's say there is and, and I'm not saying anybody should do it okay I'm saying that obviously there's a lot of rumors out there about what caused all these events and if they were to be in the Wikipedia I, I would think that they would just be like a couple lines not like a whole subsection where you're gonna go three paragraphs on it it would literally just be kind of a, a few lines in there Android O'Malley is now on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, and he's absolutely. I love ruining him at ruining him. It makes me want to kill my twin brother, Ohm. This in no way is related to the NSFW show. This is the kind of references that Wikipedia requires. I'm really glad the internet has put this together. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Android Malik, for joining us. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, Brian. What's up? Uh, people pay for this show. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, I dare you to tell me all about... I defy you, Justin Robert Young. You're always threatening to tell me who pays for this show. I'm calling you out. I think it's time. Let me know. Pull back this curtain. This I episode of... Transparency. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and unfiltered. For 20% off of your new account, go to ProXPN.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. I'll tell you what, man. It was ironic that I said transparency because you know what you could have done? You could have just said X Pro XPN, bro, and then I could have gotten through. I'd been like, I don't know who you are, where you're going, but your encrypted traffic tells me that I ain't going to find out, you jerk. And then I'd try to punch you, but then my fist would break because your encryption is so strong and hard. Strong Complete heart. online privacy through a 512-bit encryption tunnel works via OpenXPN or PPTP. You choose. Protect yourself against ISP's six strikes rule. Keep your personal internet usage private at work. ProXPN makes your internet connection region-free. Yeah, and you could actually pick, like, what area you want to pretend to be in. Uh, so, like, uh, uh, I mean, I already told the story about somebody who was trying to do a DDoS on me. And so I set up a honeypot using uh, a crappier uh, VPN service. But now they have ProXPN. I actually have it on my laptop to where it automatically turns on all the time. And, uh, and I forget it. Like, it's so fast that I don't even notice the difference between my between being locally on the Wi-Fi versus going through ProXPN. Only the difference is, is I don't have to worry 
about anyone. Like they only keep records for two weeks on top of that. So it's like after two weeks, whew, it's gone. It's in the ether. It don't matter. It doesn't exist. It's like, you don't know it, I don't know it, the whole damn world doesn't know it. And nobody needs to know it, thanks to ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash twit for more information and to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for an entire year. we got a special offer for you guys. Use the code NSFW to receive 20% off for the lifetime of your account that's less than $5 a month on the yearly plan. If you're not satisfied, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. So go to proxpn.com slash twit and sign up with the code NSFW. We thank ProXPN for their support of NSFW. Let me just say, as far as ProXPN, if you are going to correct like erroneous entries in Wikipedia and you're worried that somebody may not like the fact that you're telling the truth on those Wikipedia entries, then maybe you should use ProXPN because then they'll think like, well, I'll shut you down, Manchester, England. Click. And then guess what? That's that's not your IP. Wasn't Listen, you? man, I'm not telling tales out of school, but let's say theoretically there was somebody who used to sit in this chair constantly who may or may not be using Pro XPN to fraudulently use his NHL Center Ice Package to watch games that are broadcast on regular television uh, because he is allegedly using it from England. <clears throat> well, whoever that person is, my guess is he's already paying for the service and paying he the is. premium package and is probably frustrated by irrational region locking that shuts him well, out. Well, let me just say this, all right? he's already paid for. So I'm annoyed because I am a paying subscriber of NHL Center Ice, right? Mm. Or NHL Game Center, whatever it is, the internet version of it. And I'm a, I'm a fan of the Pittsburgh Penguins, which happens to be on television a lot. And, like, they're on, like, the NHL network when I'm, like, in a random-ass hotel in Poopsburg, Illinois... Yep. Uh, where they Play don't have the, the NHL network at the Red Roof Inn. What am I supposed to do? Twiddle my thumbs and start farting a, a silly tune? No. No, what you're supposed to do is drink a bottle of <laughs> no and hobo. Say, no hobo. <laughs> <laughs> what else would be a good no hobo? That's the only one. But no hobo. Sleep outside next to the railroad tracks. Wait a second. No hobo. Wait a second. No <laughs> hobo. No hobo works for every playoff beard ever. In any sport, especially the NHL. The thing uh, is, that okay, these so guys can grow beards. Here's another one. You're like, hey, bro, mind if I crash on your couch tonight? No hobo. Right. Yeah, there we go. Hey, bro, can I hang out and not mark up your fence with my, my knife? No hobo. <laughs> with my secret code. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no hobo. No hobo. <laughs> and hey, hey bro, can, can, you, can you not can watch I my bindle? To the next town? Can I catch a ride to the next town? No hobo. Yeah, just, you know, just exactly. Hey, 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 listen, uh, I'm addicted to heroin. No hobo. Can I take all my belongings and put it in a handkerchief and tie it to the stick with a spindle? <laughs> no hobo. Um, uh, hey, listen, I long for the Big Rock Candy Mountain. No hobo. <laughs> you know, the fact that I jump into trail uh, into train cars, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's just exercise. No hobo. Hey, man, uh, I'd like to come to Dragon Con and play the spoons for you guys. No hobo. <laughs> the fact that I can make a chili out of anything between cat parts or my shoelaces, you know, that, that just means I'm a good cook. No hobo. <laughs> All right. What, what, else, what else we got on the docket for tonight, Justin? Uh, I don't pay attention to your docket. No hobo. <laughs> no hobo. Uh, I'd like to uh, I'd like to work and then uh, and get paid for tomorrow's labor, but then just vanish out of town. No hobo. No hobo. <laughs> uh, hey, what 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 are you? How much are you traveling these days, Justin? Oh my God, uh, I'm actually not on the road a lot this week, but I'm doing a uh, the old uh, the old the old double stop of Birmingham, Alabama, and Washington D.C. next week. I'm going to be in uh, Birmingham in a couple of months. And by the way, somebody in the chat room is saying homeless people are funny. Ha ha. Hobos are not homeless. Homeless. Hobo means homeward bound. They're migrant workers trying to get from point A to point B who live a life of, of mystery on the rails. Uh, also, I was making fun of homeless people, even if Brian wasn't. Okay. Um, Padre SJ actually points out, he asked me, where am I staying in Washington, D.C.? And I am proud to announce... I am staying at the largesse of the Catholic Church in the Jesuits. Jesuit house uh, in Washington, D.C. 
Dude, are you are you excited about this? This actually sounds so awesome. thrilled. You have no I, I, idea how excited I am to tell everybody I know and have been telling everybody I know that okay, I am yeah, staying at the Christ, Jesuit house. We're trying to have like a nice drink before yeah. the show, and you just wouldn't shut the hell up about this. I'm bragging. You're like, hey, Jesuits, hey, this. I'm like, dude, we haven't even ordered yet. Now, I know. Okay, now, Justin, Justin. <laughs> Normally you save that until after you order. <laughs> Absolutely. Justin, Justin runs with, a, a, I would say it's fair to say that a, a lot of your friends tend to be atheist. Uh, would, what, what's their reaction been? Are they all like, what? Well, I think the, the point is not necessarily that I am friends with a lot of, of atheists, but because... I'm just, I'm just thinking about in terms of like, you're saying you're telling everyone. Well, yeah. No, no, I, it, it's it's means. more, it's actually worse. It's worse than the fact that I am friends with a lot of people who do not believe in the central tenet of the Catholic Church, but rather that I have always been the first person in the group to make the joke that would be found offensive by many Catholics. Like, that's kind of been like my MO throughout... Yeah. The, like my much of my adult life, but really, I'll tell you what. Since I've met Padre SJ, I have seen the red light of Rolor. I mean, the uh, the light of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing: Christ. is in my mind, I just picture like all Jesuits must be Padre SJ. You must go in Ew. and they're making jokes about your junk and uh, and and dropping science on you, you know, and talking about enterprise tech. I used to, I used to like, I went to Catholic school for twelve years. Yeah, and uh, and uh, a lot of nuns involved. Yep. Uh, no, no, no rulers. No big issues there. Sure, uh, they're all very proper. And uh, I looked at Georgetown University, run by Jesuits. Of course, yeah, very nice people. Yeah, uh, I don't know where Padre fits in. He, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I don't I know love, where he fits you. in, but he is like he is. I, I, love I, you, but I, I don't I'm quite not get even it. kidding. Like we did a thing. We did an interview that I put out on on my the the jury podcast that was like. He answered literally every dumb question that I've ever had about Catholicism. Well, and, and and believe me, these are like the most rudimentary, like, does the Pope really talk to God? As far as I can tell. <laughs> like, and he answered them in like the best way possible. There is like, I, I, I look at like not necessarily the Catholic Church specifically, but the the boundaries of of the Catholic Church in a fundamentally completely different way since I started talking to Padre S J. Now maybe That's a fact. maybe maybe uh, the old school Catholics are different and maybe the Jesuits. And are, by, by Padre S J says I as I don't know where I fit in most of the time. I think I think that that's an intriguing statement you made yourself there, Padre. I think that you are a New Testament fellow where God is benevolent and nice and doesn't flood the world at random at times. You know the Old Testament God is really mad. But New like, Testament God is really nice. He's like, hey, here's my son. Hang out with him. He's awesome. Hey, you know what he's going to come back? Have some Easter eggs. You know? Before that, though, he's like, he's like poking eyes out and stuff. It's really... <laughs> poking eyes out. And then he's just he, like... Well, like eye he for and eye. And then, then, then he hits him. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah, hey, you. you. Block it. He's like, hey, Justin, kill your son. You know? Oh, just kidding. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's a test. But, okay. <laughs> so, but this is what's so great about... And then, Padre, then, then God like, says, well, yeah... Why, why, why don't you go ahead and watch your tongue? And then he pulls your tongue out and puts a cigarette out on it. And... Yeah, cigarettes are also very popular in the Old Testament. <laughs> uh, wow, look at this. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Badoom, boom. Ruin them. Uh, ruin them est opidum Italia et municipum in Rigone. Uh, oh, wait, this is like a province called Ruinum that's in uh, Italy. Oh, my God. Can we announce that's where our convention is? Yes. yes. This will, is where the you know idea I will announce conceived. it. I have nothing it to do with hearts. this. In Italy, you guys are having a convention for this alcoholic beverage. It's be at the Vatican. As a newsman, trust me, it's very important. Uh, I can't wait to cover this, even on the TNT calendar soon. Uh, Paul the book guy is off. Yeah, I was it. just see seeing that. I was I'm, my hang on. Sorry, here. Let me get let me get the chat room up up on here. Links. I'm offering you a year for free, four feet by four feet high. On a high-end foot truck, uh, food truck. I like foot truck too. <laughs> it belongs in either of those. But uh, wow, are you where, kidding me? Where, 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 Paul the book guy? guy? Where are we talking about? I mean, no, number one, well, we'll take it, no matter what. Yes. Paul the book guy uh, hosts the book guy shows uh, with, um, along with Padre S J, uh, who's on there. 
Sorry, let me get my face back on here. I'm just so blown away. I'm not even on the right thing. Uh, that would be huge. Uh, and by the way, Justin, you should go do the Book Guys show. It's a good show, and you should be on it because you read as many books as I do. In fact, what are you reading right now? Did you finish the Scientology book? Oh, yeah, no, I finished. The Scientology book is amazing, and I highly recommend it. Uh, but I'm actually not listening to anything right now. I'm doing, I'm doing like, I actually go through like phases where I'm like either an audiobook guy or a podcast guy. And I'm in, yep. I'm in the podcast phase right now. I do the ex exact same thing. I finished an audiobook, go back and get caught up on all my podcasts. Uh, the, uh, right now I'm reading on Bill Meeks's recommendation, um, uh, uh, Super Gods, which is, uh, by Grant Morrison, all about uh, like the archetypes that all the comic book from the gold, gold comic book heroes from the golden age, silver age, the dark age, and you know. Can, can we uh, all agree that Grant Morrison, like bat poop crazy, but probably smarter, more cogent than all of well, us, which Alan, is terrifying. Alan Moore is bat poop crazy, right? Yes. Grant Morrison is less crazy because he doesn't have the same facial hair. But apart from uh, that. <laughs> I agree that he is he is less crazy than Alan Moore. Alan Moore only is like, in his facial hair. Alan Moore is like up here, and Grant Morrison's like here, you know. And, and Chris Claremont's right, right in the middle because he has a bigger now beard. Listen, as as you're worshiping his his facial hair, you got you got to give the proper disclaimer of uh, of no hobo, no hobo, no, no hobo, because you know hobo. growing a beard without a, without without having a razor, and and grooming it like me and Justin have, you know we meet, we 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 love. Alan Moore's beard, no hobo. No hobo. No hobo, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think sorry. you should just have the, 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 the human goat clip. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, yeah, man. Um, so, so I didn't get you to read the Master Switch yet. No. What is the Master Switch about? I, I've, I've talked about it. It's about the how uh, information empires fall, about how disruptive influences who don't have a dog in the fight come in with a better technology and destroy it, how at first Western Union ignored uh, AT, uh, AT&T or Bell and then eventually, you know, uh, got bought by Bell. And then Bell uh, essentially ran early days of radio, but then it, it got destroyed because it was initially very, very diverse. And then there was People use the hammer of law to consolidate everything in there. And the same thing happened in television. Same thing happened in cable. Everything was disruptive at first, but then gets consolidated and becomes the man. And now we're at the same thing. Like it, it talks about how in the 90s that almost happened with the internet, with AOL and Time Warner, AOL buying Time Warner essentially. And their plan was like, we'll control the internet and we'll funnel everyone to freaking uh, Time Warner content. And then, uh, but the difference was that it was just too diversified by that point. And the question is, you know, with the walled gardens, and this is actually a good question for IAS, with the walled gardens that we see with Facebook, with uh, with Apple, with the curated experiences, with the partnerships that but we see. But we're already seeing that not be true. And also, IAS, like, asked me personally, hey, can you do me a favor and keep the flack off me and do the ad read? Because uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Uh, All right. Let's do it. Let's talk. Let's talk about the ad read. Who are the people paying well, no, for this? No, no, show? no, 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 no. I, I can, I can talk about. Oh wait, hold on. Wait, we have we. Iaz is back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, why don't you ask your question to Iaz? I'm ready for it. <laughs> Iaz, how you doing? Good about you. Do a better uh, impression. Really good. What do you do? Think? A better Hi. impression. I'm good about you. <laughs> what What do you think about the thesis of the master switch that sooner or later everything gets consolidated because the powers that be have the money to make it happen? Is it possible that the internet is too diversified, too international, too global to fall into the same trap? I am the mass controller, just from Spider Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> WTF, mate? That's all I have. Right on. All right. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad we got that all settled up. Thank you very much, Ayaz. Now we're gonna. Ayaz, I hope you don't mind. We're gonna take just a quick moment and talk about the folks who make NSFW possible. Justin, who are those people? Tonks Coffee. Oh my God. Does that have the freshest beans? Like roasted within 24 hours? Uh, of is it? They're roasted 24 hours. Or they're picked 24 hours. Uh, Brian, let me go ahead and and give you the science on this. I'm gonna smell it first. Oh, making me mad. Uh, this episode of NSFW is brought to you by Tonks Coffee. Tonks offers bi-weekly subscriptions. Tonks sources their beans directly from the growers. They're roasted and shipped within 24 hours, giving you the freshest coffee beans in the world. For a free sample, go to tonks.org slash NSFW. Here's the deal. 
Tonks is a small uh, company made up of a tight-knit team of experts who believe that everyone deserves a great cup of coffee and everyone can brew a great cup right in their kitchen if they have the right beans, Brian. Yeah, dude, that's the problem. It's not like, look, let's face it, it ain't the science of the baristas. They're not like wizards and artists who know how to make coffee good. You got good source materials, that's all you need. You get good beans, you get them roasted, and 24 hours, boom, they're on your freaking door. You're set, man. Really good coffee. Brian uh, Tonks' Twitter feed is a testament to this extraordinary coffee. Ship within 24 hours of roasting, home-brewed coffee can be just as good as your favorite cafe. It's just uh, not that hard. You know, your barista ain't uh, some sort of scientist. But it all starts with fresh beans, which uh, you can't get if you buy bags from the grocery stores. And pre-ground coffee, Brian, even worse. Yeah, come on, pre-ground. What is it? Is this is this so difficult for you to press grind? You don't like what well, you don't like freshness. You need a pre-ground. You want it as stale as possible. Come on, you get, get good. Dogs get offers so plenty of help for the best brewing methods and equipment, and talks sources directly from the growers because of their extensive relationships. They can follow the tilt of the earth and select the best beans when they're at their peak. Tonks' coffee also makes a fantastic gift. If you're looking for something for that hard-to-buy person, why not get them a great cup of coffee every morning? So much more meaningful than a gift card. Yeah. I had an idea for a bit. Oh, wait, do we have a code? Uh, Tonks. Yeah, here, how about this? If you fancy yourself a coffee connoisseur or just love coffee, you need to try Tonks Coffee. These guys are fanatical about delivering the best beans in the world. They source directly from the growers, roasted, and ship within 24 hours so it's fresh as can be. Every two weeks, you get a new batch of incredible beans roasted to perfection. Tonks is a, is a subscription only, and they're offering a free sample to our listeners. Visit tonks.org slash NSFW to get some for yourself or send it to someone who you know would appreciate the finer things in life. Visit tonks.org slash NSFW today. And we thank Tonks for supporting NSFW. Dude. Right there. Update from Paul the Book Guy. Uh, update a whole side of the food truck, eight feet by four feet for a year. Big old fat ruin him ad. Just send him the full color art. We will make sure to make that happen. Where is Paul the Book Guy? Because I would like to see this ad. Well, okay, but here's the problem. I think he's in Canada, and I don't know if we can ship to Canada. <laughs> that would be a bitter irony if everybody was asking for Ruinum up north of the border, and then uh, and then they couldn't get it. What do you think they'd sound like? It's a, they'd be all like, take off, eh? Oh, hey, do you know what I found out? That hey, host, you know, no, the, I just want some Ruinum, eh? Uh, they'd be Closer. absolutely polite. They're Canadians. They'd be like, could we have some Ruinum, please, eh? I'm really upset. You I know, got a lot of issues inside of me that could be resolved by Ruinum, eh? <laughs> By dream. Could you please bring it over, eh? And that's what they would do. And I'm sorry that you can't do it, and I feel bad. Do I need to cross the eh? border, eh? I'm so sorry. I want to bring trans. I'll give them back tomorrow, eh? <laughs> tomorrow I'm gonna go across. What's this a lines. boot? What's, <laughs> uh, dude. Do you know that when they say hoser, and by they I mean like Bob and Doug McKenzie, like hoser as an insult refers to the losing team has to like hose down. The ice for the Zamboni after the game. That's what a hoser is. Did you know that? I did not. I just thought yeah, it was I like did. some big slam. I totally knew By that. the Canucks. <laughs> right on, man. Uh, yeah, look, already people super excited about uh, Ruinum Con, eh? That also be will be uh, actually referenced in the Wikipedia article for Ruinum. Can't wait to see that. I'll tell you what, Brian. Maybe it's because I've had uh, a few... Waters, as it were. Waters, yes. Yeah. Waters, uh, powerful, powerful. But, but drink. do you want to do you want to talk about just the general idea of maybe? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Tossing it out there, maybe like a live one day event. What are you talking about? The nerdtacular thing? We've already talked about that on the air. What, nerdtacular? No. It's great. Happening in a month. We're both going to be there. By the way, when are you getting there? Uh, I'm getting there the night before. So is that the 4th? Yes. Wait, is this in July? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. I got I to gotta make sure I'm still available and I'm not doing the other thing. 
whatever. Wait, I'll did, did you just double book Nerdtacular? No. Well, like, because that other thing might be most of the month of July. Right? Oh, the uh, the big other thing. Well, yeah, the other thing, right? So, uh, I got. I will make sure to carve out Nerd Nerdtacular no matter what. But yes, uh, at it's the fifth and sixth is is Nerdtacular very early in July. Well, and we've talked about this before. We talked about doing like a live, uh, a live kind of sub night attack single, basically. Uh, at, doing a, at, a, at Nerdtacular, but that's yeah. not the general idea that I would I would like to maybe just discuss. What are you talking about? You're talking about like going on the road, going on tour? I mean, maybe we do maybe a little uh like a one day thing. We bring in a couple friends, we bring in Ayaz and Oh, Tom. you're talking about doing it like a diamond con thing. We talked about doing like a diamond Yeah. Well, okay, now here's the thing. You and I discussed this. Your position was it should be in San Francisco area because that's where all the talent was. Yes. My position was it sh that's the last place it should be because that's not where the fans are. Like we should figure out where the highest density of people who would want to see you and me and Tom Merritt and Veronica Belmont or all of our friends, you know, use our cloud. I don't know, maybe pull a little Aya Zaktar out there uh, and, and make happen. Like I'm all about going to where the fans are rather than the reverse. And well, so- I'm just saying that the person who puts on cons semi-professionally who is watching this show uh, was very ecstatic for one of those options and was furious about the other as somebody who actually has put these on. Uh, yeah. Uh, Patrick Delahenty. Uh So, yeah, no, my, no my, my point of view is that uh, for the first one, the first one that we would ever do, the proof of concept, as it were, the the key would be to put together the best lineup we possibly could from like 8 a.m. to whenever we would go. Uh, and then from there, if we could draw people to where that content was, then we could go to different cities for the first one. Yeah, the problem is, is that if it's West Coast, if it's in San Francisco, that means it's geographically close to Nerdtacular and chronologically it'll be close to nerdtacular. Well, number um, one, we have no idea when we would do it. In fact, yeah. it's an idea that literally has never been talked about in any kind of extensive way at all. Yeah. And that's not even like a wink, wink joke. Like it has not at all ever been discussed. Uh, yes, no, that, that is a, this is uncharted waters. Cause unlike most of the time with Justin and, and I. And also I, I literally, all I wanted to talk about was the idea of an idea, not necessarily where it would be. That's not the conversation I would like to have. I would like to have an idea of what we would like to do. I would like to go to this awesome Rudum fan website, <laughs> which is amazing. Oh, my God. Is that a GeoCity site? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's awesome. Chatrealm.us slash Ruinum. <laughs> Pick of the week, Yahoo! Save yourselves. That's going to hammer animated GIF. Or GIF, excuse me. As, as as the creator said. Oh my God, that is the best site ever. <laughs> I love it. I want to go to there. That's really amazing. <laughs> so this is happening. Uh, right? Works best with Internet Explorer. Uh, okay, well, back back to your important point, Justin. Uh, yeah, man, I'm totally down with seeing what would happen, and and let's start the discussion about where it should be and when it should be. Uh, but I would love to. I would absolutely love to have our own little party that we can host and and just make it a one day thing because that's how that's how Nerdtacular got started. Is it was a one day event, and in fact, I believe well, it was he the he literally just it started as like, hey, let's go see a movie. Yeah, and like let's all everybody in Salt Lake City come see the movie, and then like. All of a sudden, more people came from out of town than would show up from in town. And, yeah. like, that was, uh, you know, kind of the, the the tale of Nertacular. I think for us, it's like, I don't know. Like, the, the and here, this is real talk. The story of NSFW, not in terms of, like, how we deal with everybody who was listening, but rather right. how we talk to other people that also do podcasting for a living is, like, right. I can't believe that your download numbers are so low and yet you consistently outdraw us at live events. <laughs> yes. Well, and so if that's the case, then then let's freaking do this dance. Let's do an amazing live event and get people. Like if we have the ability to draw big live crowds, 
let's at least use that and have awesome live crowds somewhere. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so that's, I, I kind of just wanted to kick this idea out into the mainstream because well, it's, it's, it, it's been something that's like been like with me, especially since Patrick moved up here to uh, the Bay Area. And he's a guy who like has put on many and booked you at, at conventions. Patrick on a set, conveniently lit. <laughs> Well, hello, Patrick. And by the way, we've mentioned Patrick before. Patrick put together the entire uh, BBpedia, one of the best contributors, uh, sitting right next to Aya Zaktar, uh, looking fabulous as always. Uh, the well, yeah. uh, I never uh, looked better than that. Been one of the one of the best of of chat realm, and we thank him for everything he's done. Um, uh, Patrick, you came from you came from Boston. You don't think you, know, you couldn't do a thing in Boston? Just saying. You you're not on a mic. Just give me a thumbs I'm up, thumbs down. I'll, I'll speak for you. Go ahead. Uh, before I came to Petaluma, before I came was to Petaluma, starting to think about the convention, and it was based here, not in Boston. He's saying, "Screw you guys, go to hell." No. Yep. Nope. That's you what guys I heard, heard Wait, that. That's it, what, is yeah. that is that impossible to get his no, mic up his there? His audio was in there. That's all. No, 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 I, no I we, heard yeah, we heard it. We heard him. Okay, just I'm yeah. on. I'm not complete. Uh, all right. Well, right on. Well, look, it's it's a dialogue. Now, what's the, what's the appropriate venue, Justin? Where do we want to tell people to chime in on their thoughts on whether or not this is something they want to do or where they would want well, to do let, it? Well, let's just go ahead on Twitter because that's what we, we pay attention to the most. Let's use hashtag DiamondCon. And, right. uh, and, and let's just say... I mean, like, what, what should we focus the conversation on? Because I feel like... Whatever. No, it's up to them. This is... We're, we're in the early... We're in the, the scheming and dreaming phase where it's like it doesn't even matter. Who knows if it's even going to happen? Let's just wave our hands and everybody make wishes. And if enough people make the same wish, then maybe we'll feel drawn to that direction. Well, but I feel like let's focus on talent first and foremost. Who would you like to see? I mean, whoever we can get. I mean, I mean, you know the roster. Look at anyone. We, uh, I mean, anyone from past guests that we've had on to. Uh, uh, to I'm, I'm sitting right here, you <laughs> jerks. I, I'm right here. Guests, people yeah. who are currently interrupting the hosts because they want to be in. I think that, that's a great qualification. Uh, we listen, should... we have in the chat room right now somebody saying 24 power hours in a row, and her name may or may not be Ali Spagnol. <laughs> if Ali writes new songs, we will do this, and I will die. As long as we have the ambulance in, in, in tow, let's do it. Number one, I think we could do the uh, the Ruinum sponsored Ali Spagnola Power Five Minutes. I like this idea. <laughs> Followed by the water five minutes. Followed by the it. ambulance. <laughs> Cripes. Yeah, whatever you do, I don't recommend setting up something called the randomizer. Uh, with, uh, I'll tell you what, tall beer dude is saying if it's in the Bay Area, he can have a tall beer dude craft beer tasting. Oh, see, look, the campaigning's already begun. All right, uh, I mean, I'm down for what for whatever, but but we'll leave it to the fans to to chime in on there. Uh, is there anything else going on that we got to talk about before we wrap stuff up? Uh, I don't know. Is there? What's going uh, on in the news? Don't don't drink Listerine. Um, no hobo. No hobo. Oh, hey, I actually have an important thing. Let's uh, let's go ahead and rock this little gem. Right. Welcome to Move Draft Minute for the week of June 3rd, 2013. I'm your host, Roberto Viegas. Everybody's finally on the board, but how did this week shake out? Let's go check out the rankings. Tom Eric's in sixth place with After Earth bringing in $27.5 million this week. Cargill's in fifth place with $88.5 million. Sarah Lane's in fourth place with Now You See Me bringing in $29.2 million this week, bringing her total to $157.7 million. Scott Johnson's in third place with $230.5 million. Justin Rupp Young's in second place with $236.3 million. And still in first place with $473.2 million. It's Brian Brushwood. And that is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of June 3rd, 2013. Dude, uh, I'll tell you what. No hobo. Uh, freaking um, to, uh, kudos. Uh, uh, lo siento to, to one Tomas Marit. Uh, wow. Major kudos. And also, that dude... He put the butt in butt hurt in not wanting to talk about it on frame rate. Uh, like, you know, I, I think, I think, I mean, uh, he was, the problem was, it, just as I was a little bit checkmated last week, he was checkmated because, like, there's nothing for him to say outside of, like, man, I really regret. Like, he said, yes, I got in a bidding war with Cargill and I lost. I flinched and, or, you know. Okay, no, that's what, that was his answer to my question of, like, at this point, the next 
M. Night Shyamalan movie? Yeah. Is it even a biddable movie? Like, like looking at this, like, as, like, a, as a fantasy league, right? Like, this is like if, like, in a sports fantasy league, if and, somebody and blew out their knee for the fourth time in four his, seasons. His answer to, to the question, has in Night Shyamalan lost it, is, hey, man, look, I was in a bidding war with Carl. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. You guys and, think... And I lost, all right? Fine, you guys there, think that M. Night Shyamalan is now Grant Hill, who now retired recently. Recently. You think, you think that he, Shyamalan, should retire as well? Because the thing is, Hill is great. Hill did a great job, great piece of a team. No, no, no. But Shyamalan has no idea what he's doing. Okay, okay, but no, 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 no. My, my point is, is Hill an ownable fantasy player? Well, not in now. fantasy basketball yeah. or, or in the last couple of years. Like, and this is what I'm saying about, about Chamoyan. You know, like in, and we have a very limited bi like bidding pool for the summer movie league, but it's like, do you get into a bidding war with a Shamalian movie at this point? My question like, is... Like, he's poison. He's not even bad. Again... He's not even, like, do decent good. Like, he, he just got paired with one of the biggest movie stars on the planet and took a dump to the point where a reasonably well-reviewed magician movie... Did way better than him. And me and Brian know how ridiculous that is. My question is, yeah. do you hate yourself or do you don't care about your own opinions? The fact is, Shyamalan has no idea what he's doing at this point. And the thing is, if you're going to... And the thing is, drink. If you're going to do this, you don't go in with a Shyamalan movie. He hasn't had a good hit since Sixth Sense, maybe. Maybe Signs. If Unbreakable. Signs. Unbreakable is very good. Yeah. But signs, good. I think, is pretty close. But the thing is, this guy... He is doing a two and a half hour Twilight Zone movie, and there's a reason why Twilight Zone was only 22 minutes. Uh, all right, Brian, M. Night Shyamalan, yes. do you even bid next time? Dude, hang on. All I know is that people are telling us that we broke Tonks's website. We got a we we got a uh, everything's down message. Tonks should be back before you can arrow press it, which I take as a a badge of of honor. I'm sorry. What was the question, sir? Uh, M. Night Shyamalan, do you even bid next time he's got a movie? I, I yes yes and I don't know why uh, because his movies <laughs> That's make twist. money I mean like like as bad they as don't the last Airbender was it made money it made hundreds of millions of dollars no uh, like, like Airbender saying, didn't then somebody look up the grosses the twist is that Brian will actually bid on this that's the M Night Shyamalan I mean uh, this one twist. didn't make money and that was the point it's all been horrible since Six Sense and the happening by the way which I watched for an hour and a half. Wow, that should have been a twenty-five minute Twilight Zone movie or episode, and it was terrible. So, all right. So, last year, Brandon went for one hundred and thirty-one. I doubt that After Earth will go for that. So, we are on a declining trajectory. Sure. But but the last Airbender, uh, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna. I mean, look, I mean, you you and I disagree. I mean, I I don't know that you need to convince me, but it's like I will I will bid on it if the price is right. Um, I, I think he's going to continue to make something. I think we, I think we, we need a site. No, he's we right. Need, we need an actual site for this. Because by the way, I think we've talked about this. The crowning year for this this uh, idea that we have birthed and and nurtured on this show and frame rate and with so many of our friends, it becomes a man. It's bar mitzvah is 2015, right? Yeah, like uh, when yes. the biggest oh, no, no, year. It's in you. movie history with Star Wars, Avengers, and everything else. Yeah. Hang on. I'm looking now. People sent me, like, adjusted for price inflation. I mean, you're right. We, we need some kind of place to put all this stuff. Look, man, Lady in the Water did 72. So it was definitely, you know, Last Airbender was up from that. And, and After Earth's going to do better than Lady in the Water. You think it's going to do better than 72? It did uh, under twenty, didn't it? That's that's seventy two worldwide. So yes, I oh, do. Oh yeah. Oh no, no, no. I mean, I'm not counting. I mean, like no, no. worldwide. After Earth might well, actually it, make money, but Lady we don't do water, a worldwide it, league. Lady, Lady in the Water did fifty one uh, domestic, and Unbreakable did one thirty nine, and it, Village did one forty six. Uh, I'm gonna say that After Earth has a chance to even domestic crack over a hundred and be in the same neighborhood as those. I all right. I said I would never do this again. <laughs> You're going to bet me a steak? <laughs> steak. I have a steak on After Earth. Just a ah! belt. Before, wait, oh, you did? He just what? done it. He done done it, y'all. Bum, bum, bum. Do it.
All right, before you do this, Justin, I, w I want to point out to you that traditionally, opening weekends do about a third of the total gross, and the opening weekend, I think, did $29 million. No. It did less than that. Oh, did it? Yeah. Well, then forget it. I ain't taking your bet. Gosh <laughs> darn it. <laughs> what uh, movie is this? Uh, After Earth. After Earth. Oh, the Will Smith and... Oh, and no, you're right. No, it did 29, 5, 7, 6 to, uh, currently. Numbers and As of right points. now, it is 29. Yeah, okay. They're saying it was 27, 5 on there. Like, I'm not quite willing to bet a stake on it. I mean, like, I, I can give you a, a pity stake if that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. Really? That's the game you're playing? I'm America's butcher. I just hand out stakes. Uh, you're you're done. Yeah, uh, the America's Butcher wants to get back in the game. All I'm right, Sam right, the well, Butcher bringing Alice the meat like Fred Flintstone gonna, riding around with both feet. If that's going to be the game, I'm going to pick a better I'm going to pick a better uh, cut than what I'm being offered right now, by Mr. You're Butcher. the one who came up with it. I you're the one who you're the one who said SB, bro. That's 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 your turn. So all of a sudden, steak gets mentioned and you go running scurred. Yeah, I am. I'm terrified of meat. You go running from your old fears. No hobo. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. I was going to make something about rat meat. Joke. Uh, okay, so real quick, I do want to, before we wrap things up, I want to uh, give a plug to Chin Beard's Kickstarter. Did you guys see this? All right, number one, let me just say this. Uh, we should all be running under the skirt of Chin Beard because... That dude is going to be Hollywood, good, rich, and famous. He creates top quality, amazing stuff. And if you want to be on his good side, you would donate to his Kickstarter, which will be the the uh, ignition fuel that launches him into outer orbit. He is a, maybe one of the best people on the planet, and everybody needs to donate right now. If Chinbeard, Bill Duran has one flaw it's his inability to ever be on the winning team during an nsfw dragon con cosplay showdown and yes for that, he and it's the only it. thing he will never win <laughs> uh yes but then but everything else he, he he can win uh he's he's looking to create an open source gun design that you can use for anything you want and uh in any costume you want you could look totally badass I, everything he does looks amazing. It's a unique, original design that's going to be modular that you can modify. It's a cool idea. Uh, it's expensive because he needs new equipment to make it happen, so that's like 25 k uh, But he's a couple of days in and uh, already 20% plus to his goal. So jump on in, man. Uh, and, well, and plus, and this is like, this, he only gets funded if uh, if everyone hits the number, right? Like, you don't get charged. Yeah, this no. is not one of those flexible funding shenanigans. No, this is... Uh, Kickstarter, all or nothing, man. This ain't like Indiegogo where if he gets five thousand dollars out of twenty five, he's got five on it, right? Like yeah, he is absolutely all or nothing on this. So donate, cause I'll guarantee you this: you put money in, you're gonna be seeing these guns in movies for the next fifty years. Yeah, and that's a fact, like Agnes, Agatha, Jermaine, and Jack, because there is nothing about movie making that doesn't say no, no, no. no. Take the free thing that we can just add stuff to. People yeah. will use this. You will be part of movie history. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Plus, keep in mind that, uh, man, okay, we're going overboard here. Uh, but, like, like, keep in mind also that it's like like the next generation of movie makers are doing it on YouTube and doing it non-conventional, non-traditional distribution deals. And those are the people that are going to jump on this. And those are the people you're going to be able to point and be like, I helped to make that happen. And plus, Bill's really, really good people. But uh, so definitely uh, just, just type in... Um, uh, I, I, what was it? Prop Space Gun? I don't even know what it is. This is what, how terrible I am. Hey, uh, Justin. Yeah. Talk about, like, in that moment, I sounded totally defeatist. Like, I hated myself, and it made me think of Dan Harmon. Uh, prop <laughs> Propspaceguns.com, uh, which reminded me, like, I kind of want to get into community now that Dan Harmon's back going to be back on running the show now. Did you ever watch it? Uh, I never did. I, I mean, I saw one episode, and I'm like, oh, it's pretty good. But it's like like the level of excitement that you get from people who have been watching it. Like, why don't you watch Community? Why don't you just shoot yourself in the face? I, I, I'll tell you, I've watched most of the first season. Uh, and I've liked everything I've seen. Uh, I very much enjoyed it, and I understand it to be a very, very good show. Uh, it has the kind of fervor that an Arrested Development did. Because understand mm -hmm. this, these shows 
gain like rappers, they gain their biggest prominence after they're dead. Yeah. That's yes. True. But this one, this one pulled a Tupac and that it never really died. It just faked its death for a while and now is is legend. Well, yeah, except like, I, I don't know. I, mean, I haven't seen it, but like, as I understand, you're a community fan. No, I yeah, I, I, is raising I, his I hand. I used to watch Community uh, at seasons one through four. Good God, did it start to suck when they lost their showrunner. And the fact that he's coming back, it's a huge deal. The last season has been terrible. Yeah. Terrible. It's kind of like this. Community is really smart. And if they bring back their showrunner, it's going to be a big deal. Next season, I can't wait for this guy to come back because, wow, the last 20 episodes, horrible. And by the way, I'll tell you what. You can read it actually on uh, Alan Seppenwall's blog on uh, HitFix, who is my favorite television critic. Uh, he's like a huge, like, uh, yeah, an encyclopedia of television knowledge. He couldn't remember in history, in television history, when a showrunner has been fired and then asked to be brought back. Showrunners have often yeah. quit and then come back, but no one's ever been fired and come back. This is, like, historic. But uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to catch up with Community. It's got a huge following. It's a very smart show from what I've seen, so I'm pumped. All right, well, look, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Jammer B, if you could take us out with a lullaby. Uh, just want to take a moment to thank everybody who made this show possible. Thank you for IAS for joining us. Thank you to... Do we have, like, a studio audience there tonight? Is that really what's going uh, there on? There was. We, we, we've yeah, chased them off, as we often do. Uh, but uh, we have on, on the lit set here, uh, IAS and Patrick. Yeah, my, my substitute. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, 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 we also have a, a Delahanty, a beat LA. What, what, what's that? This that stick the there. Substitute. It's a, it's a chop. Looks like she's got a ruler. Like all of this talk about Catholicism. Catholic school. I love ah. rulers. All right, calm down, kids. Uh, Brian, good episode. Yeah, man. Good time. Had a good time hanging out. I'm glad everything worked out. And uh, I as funny as always. And uh, I guess all there is left to say is do me a favor and die in a fire. See you next Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Brian Brushwood. Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile than to do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while. Oh, NSF. W I love you Oh NSF